Hi there folks and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Well, we got a lot to do today. I'm going to show you, we're going to do a quick walk around and we're going to see what we can get done before the weather turns the crap on me. And I mean turn the crap, I mean, there's my puppies. <laughs> Yeah, it's supposed to be windy today. It's, I want to, just, what's this white crap on my boat covers? You know, we had a, we had a couple days of 80 degrees and that lasted for a couple of days. And then it went to poo pooville. Okay, back to normal spring, which is fine. But overnight lows of 32, stop it. Overnight lows of 45, okay, we can dig it. But it's chilly out this morning and we've got to get, I've got a new thing. I've been thinking of it for a long time. And when I say a long time, I mean literally months now of how to put a seat, you know, a comfortable seat on a John boat. Uh, you know, I, I've seen those ones that, you know, have little screws that clamp onto the seat. Well, if your seat's smooth and no lips, those don't hold on. And then you gotta add extra clips to make sure it doesn't fall off. So it's kind of useless to me. But I got, a, I got an idea I wanna share with you. And I think it's gonna work. We're gonna use some of my new tools that I've got. And we're gonna see if we can make this happen. So we'll pull that cover off here in just a minute. I got another issue. As you might've heard in a video or two ago, working in the old green boat from a buddy, uh, the old Jeep, the old tow vehicle, the things that gets my boats back and forth to the lake uh, is not working properly anymore. Runs great, drives great, but the drive shaft on this side, I'm pretty sure is El Tosto because it does, uh, it makes a horrible noise. It's been crunchy, make, say, make it, bleh. it's been making these crunchy sounds for a while now and it's finally reached the end and i luckily it's cold enough i'm not going to the lake this weekend to take a boat out but unluckily it's cold enough i still need to work on it and get that sorted out so we're going to do several things in this video we'll see how far we get and how much we get done i've got a i mean it's let's just see how what time it is i finally got outside it's 32 degrees out right now uh it is still short sleeve weather it's 6.48, and uh, interesting, yeah, and it is, let's see, what's it going to tell me here, 32 degrees, that's freezing, yep, uh, I think that in, in Celsius is zero, right, that's an easy number to get straight. All right, we got a little bit of frosty, drifty, snowy. I don't know what this is all over the ground here, but we have it. So let's get started with the boat seats. Appreciate you guys coming along for the journey of today. And let's see how much work we can get done together. So I'm gonna plant you guys right here, I do believe. And uh, let's get this cover off. I can just loosen these up, take them off the hook. dog barking She's wanting to go back inside must just be too cold for her I'll have to go let her in let me show you got let me show you what we're working with here so in this seat as you can see in the past there's been some notches cut here and a little clippy thing there. 
Let me show you what somebody was doing there. All right, this is the kind of thing that was in there with this type of seat clamp. And as you can see, these get rusty, they lock up. They're no good, and you got these sharp pieces if you don't cut them off, hanging out both sides. I mean, these are just nasty. But uh, this is the type of thing that was in there, and somebody had notched it so that these would stick out, or, you know, this one does have a lip over here, about an inch of lip, but then it's smooth on the front over here. And then back here, Somebody had the same thing. They had a little clippy thing riveted onto here that's pulled out since then, or screws that just left a nasty burr. Then they had a clip. You know, that was one that had a clip underneath it to hold it in place so it wouldn't move around. Still not a good solid, you know, seating situation as far as seats go. And me, I like a seat that's gonna hold me and uh, not give out so easily. Let's take a few measurements here and see what we've got. Because we're not using this, no. Those are 310% junk. So I'm gonna take advantage of this lip on the front here. And we'll see why in a little bit. So this seat's about 14 inches here on this one. This has a lip on the front side too. That's not quite 14 inches, but I'm not putting a seat here. Nope, not gonna do it. What do we got back here? 12 and a half inches. So we got 14 and 12 and a half. And here's my plan. There is a plan. I always have a plan. May not be a good one, but it's a plan. Let's go inside and talk about it. Where well, it's just a little bit warmer than 32 degrees. We'll be back out here for you, John Boat. Just hang on. And for you new viewers out there, this boat is called the Good Enough. This boat is the official outboard motor test boat at the Backyard Marina. Has it officially tested a boat yet, or an outboard yet? It has not. But I'm hoping by the end of the summer, you guys and gals out there are tired of seeing this boat in videos out on the water with outboards on the back of it. That would be my goal. We'll see how close we can come to achieving it. Being as it is 32 degrees outside, the old heater in the shops, Running, 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 and running, running, and what's going on with my tripod here? Now ignore this green thing here. That's a, another project and another video that we're doing. But uh, we've got this old piece of five-ply plywood that's been laying around, getting dirty. Been outside, as you can see, weather faded. The glue's still holding up just fine. We're gonna go ahead and see what we, we got 18. We got plenty of wood here to cut us out what we need. Yes siree. All right, let's get to laying this out and get to Cuttonville because we need 12 and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and go 12 and a half square by 14 square with this piece of wood. And here's, let's go over to the, let's go over to the board and show you what I'm planning on doing. Okay, my thoughts are, okay, looking at the side profile of the seat, the seat out there goes up, does one of these numbers, has about a one inch lip and does one of these guys back down. That's the, you know, this is the top of your seat, right? Well, I think I'm gonna drill. Let's look at it from a top view here. So here's the long seat of the John boat right here. And say we're gonna place the seat here. What I'm gonna do is take this lip here, so this lip underneath, it's something about like that, right? Well, I'm gonna take and drill like three holes, I believe, over the course of the 14 inches. And we're gonna put one of those nut certs in there. If you don't know what that is, stay tuned. You'll see what it is. They're a miracle tool in my book. And we'll put like three more right here. 
so we can put some threaded holes that'll hold up to something in that aluminum seat. Now, I thought about putting an aluminum plate over this so I can, you know, what I want to do, let's just, let's just get rid of this again. I want to take this plywood and I want to bolt it down over this surface right here. And I'll use those nut inserts to create that bolt pattern to put that down. I thought about using aluminum here, but my thoughts are the aluminum will be, you know, hard, firm, could squeak, aluminum against aluminum, could do all kinds of things. I don't know for sure, but I do know that aluminum has, or aluminum, uh, this plywood will have a little more cushion to it, a little more give, forgiveness to it. And it may not last, and I may have to switch it out eventually, but we're gonna give this a try. So my goal is to bolt this aluminum down with those threaded inserts that I'm gonna put in this seat and then I'll mount the swivel plate or the, yeah, the swivel plate for the back seat will be here. And then we'll be able to mo bolt our seat to that. And that should give us strength. And one reason this plywood is going across here is because this aluminum is not very thick. And this is going to spread, this, let's see, distribute the weight throughout a, you know, 12 and a half by 12 and a half or 14 by 14 area on each seat. So it should not fatigue the aluminum as easily as it would if it was just, you know, you tried to put those four nut search right into the middle of the seat, <clears throat> that's not gonna last long. If you sit in it, work around in it, we're gonna spend a lot of time in this boat testing outboards and I can't have this fail, I can't have my camera guy not be comfortable, all right? So that's the game plan here. So let's go ahead and get after it and see how much we can get done. And I'm gonna paint this plywood with some indoor outdoor paint. I've got some good outdoor paint here uh, we're going to coat that so it, you know, hold up to the weather a little bit better. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, I just had a change of plans. I went, to the, I went to the cabinet, and I noticed next to the cabinet, I forgot I had a piece of starboard. This is half-inch thick starboard. And uh, if you haven't worked with, why did I drop that? If you haven't worked with starboard yet, it's not cheap, but you can work it like wood. When it comes to holding screws in place, it's a little different animal when it comes to screws. You gotta pre-drill it. Unlike wood, a lot of times you don't have to pre-drill it if it's soft enough. But uh, this I don't have to paint. This moves the project along faster. This will be more durable in the long run. Still has the kind of effects I'm looking for that wood has. So we're gonna change gears and lay out this. Now I gotta find my square. Still, I haven't found it yet. Gotta find it. There we go. Perfect fit there. I think it's gonna work out pretty darn good. We're gonna go ahead and round the corners a little bit so we don't have any sharp edges up top. And we also got the one for the front. There it is, 14 inches. As you can see, this seat has a little bit of a, a bow to it here going down, which that ain't gonna hurt anything with this. It's gonna work out just fine. And this one I'll obviously offset further off center 
toward the other side to counteract me. You know, I'm gonna have a 12 gallon gas tank back here and a battery, starter battery. So all I gotta do is put this here up front. Just a, I'm gonna go a little bit off center here. And that way when my, my camera guy, my son's in there with me, it'll actually, you know, the boat will ride pretty flat in the water is my goal. All right, let's go inside and do some more work on these pieces. All right, we got here just a regular old eight inch high swivel bolt on here with a standard base. Uh, we're just gonna make sure we're sitting on here somewhat square. Yeah, that's not bad. Doesn't really matter how perfect it is because it is a swivel base. But for aesthetics, why does that look crooked? That's just because it is crooked. What's going on here? Then we want to get it centered up on here. It's about three and five eighths. Three and five eighths. Yeah, we're good. Three and five eighths. All right, folks, let's catch you up as to where we're at right now. I've obviously cut the boards. I just ran them across my corner rounding router setup that I have on my little bench for knocking the corners off. So we got, you know, don't have any sharp edges up top. We took the router, counter board this a little bit with the router. It doesn't have to be precision or pretty. You're never going to see it. It's basically to take the thickness of this metal right here and make sure it's flush or just a little bit below flush so this won't be making contact with the seat down below it. We then took some quarter 20 uh, bolts. I had, they were just a little long. I shortened them up about two threads so they wouldn't protrude out the bottom and hit the seat, you know, the original aluminum seat as well. But that's what, that's what we've done so far. I'm pretty tickled with it. Uh, I think it's coming out great. The only thing left to do now is to, uh, what is there left to do? I want to drill one, two, I think I'm going to put four down each side here that will rivet into the seat, that will put the nut inserts in the seat, uh, or thread inserts, or whatever you want to call them. And then we'll be able to bolt this down with four screws as well, or four bolts. And this will be held in place. And then this will be, you know, this will become very stable. On its own, it's stable, right? Now we anchor it to that seat. We distributed all the weight and the pressure out over a much bigger area than this. Because this inside the seat, the aluminum is not crazy thick. I mean, it's thick enough, obviously, for you to sit on. But if you had something like this and you're going to be putting leverage on it because of this surface here and a chair, this would fatigue quickly and wear out the aluminum. This is going to distribute and also let the plastic is gonna give, if it was wood, the wood would give a little bit as well and take some of the strain off of the, off the seat. So I think four should be plenty to put down it and uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a pretty nifty seat design here. I'm, I'm liking this a whole lot. And what I'm gonna do, this is for the front seat and the reason I've got this pedestal on here is when you're sitting there, you'll be able to swing all the way around and your chair won't hit that front deck piece, which is about eight inches tall. And what do we got here? This is here to the top, it's about eight inches plus another half, so you got eight and a half. Then you put your chair on top of that. It should clear and swing 360 is my goal. So a person could, you know, put their feet down on the floor or swing 180 and they can put their feet up on that deck that's up front and just kick back and relax. And let's say fly a drone or something and get you guys some awesome snapshots or drone shots and stuff. So, so far, I think we're pretty good. 
I'm not gonna bore you with catching up the rest of them. I made four, two of the 12 inch and two of the 14 inch, and primarily because I had the material laying around here, and I thought, what else am I gonna use it for? Uh, there may be another John boat in the future, who knows, and this might be something that would apply to it because I might sell this one with it on it if I ever get rid of it. Uh, or I could unbolt this off the seat and then it still looks like a clean, neat job because it's only gonna have the nut search there that won't hurt, won't hurt you. You can sit on them, you can drag your leg across them and not worry about them cutting you. Well, but what I'm also gonna do is set this back in the driver's seat on where I'm gonna sit and see if this extra height would actually do me some good. Now what I've gone and done here is I've bolted this down to my 12 inch piece where I'm not planning on putting the seat height, but that's okay. I can test it and I can unbolt these four bolts and bolt it onto the 14 inch one, which is going in the front seat. So completely interchangeable. As you saw, I laid the one on top. Once I got the first one drilled, I laid the other one underneath it so I could drill it. I'll do the same thing with these bolt patterns here, so they're interchangeable. And say for instance, something happens to this, it breaks, destroyed, gets destroyed or something, is you know, some accident, who knows what might happen. Fatigue over the next 10 years and I have to replace it. I could have the spare ones, I could use, the, they'll bolt in and out. I'm gonna lay these out so they're in a, a nice pattern that can be repeated uh, in the future. So, you know, keep your, you know, maybe two inches from the edge here and then every two inches across, something like that. Something that's easy that if I leave my tape measure going, yeah, back 10 years ago, yeah, I'm glad I did a pattern that's two inches center to center. It's easy to relay that out again versus some random four holes transferred punched into the thing and you cannot repeat that as easily. So that's the game plan here. All right. I'm not going to bore you with that part a lot. But uh, we'll, when we get to putting this out on the boat, drilling the holes in the seats, uh, I'll bring you out there for that ride and we'll see where we go from there. All right, I think it's only fair to show a little more detail as what I, to what I did to get to this point. So this thing is what it is before we go to the next step because I realize not a lot of you may have the knowledge, technology, know-how, and I, I think I need to show, share a little more detail because what's here in my mind is very simple to create, but there's some of the detail that's important, you know, for a good outcome. So first thing I'm going to do is go, we're going to go back over to the router. I've got a scrap piece of, of uh, starboard and I'm going to show you how my router set up. So you can see what I did to make this work. First thing I'm going to do is we're going to turn on my shop vac. That's the shop vac running. That's that new Stealth Sonic by Dewalt. Love it. Now what I have here is just an old Craftsman one horsepower miter, uh, not miter, router. <laughs> Don't even know my own tools. Router that I have mounted into this wood board with three screws. Let me get this back in position here so you can see. And I have a round bit, or a radius bit I guess you call it. It looks like this. Now, this has a radius on it. It also has a ball bearing. I love using these ball bearing bits for the simple reason they can guide my, my pieces for me. So things are gonna get a little louder here, but here, this way I can go in. Right now the ball bearing's not touching. As it cuts, it'll create more touch points. Here, I've just got my shot back to help catch some of the debris so it doesn't go all over the place. It still goes quite a ways, but but as you can see here, I'm gonna turn this on. It might be hard for me to hear, for you to hear me now. We're just gonna go in. Now you guys can see this created a nice radius on this edge and I got my little ceramic deburring knife but I can also take my fingernail and just you got a nice smooth radius here. That's how I did that. There again, pretty down and dirty, nothing fancy. I don't have a lot of fancy shop wood tools. Let's go back over to the router now. Now here again, I've got the ceramic knife so I can just drag it right down these edges and it deburs this 
really nice. All right, now that that's deburred, what I want to do, this is my top side, right? My bottom side, here's these little, they're, uh, what are they called? I got a picture over here. What's it called? Where's this at? Where's it go? Here we go. Now I'm a little short on these. Um, these are pronged tea nuts, zinc plated, quarter inch size. They came in a quantity of 25. I use these quite a bit, actually. I am down to my last three and I need four for this job. But that's okay, because here's what we're gonna do. Uh, I've got my little, this is a really inexpensive router. I'm not gonna tell you where I bought it because I think everybody knows where the inexpensive router store is. I've got a quarter inch, four flute bit in here, square bottom bit. And here again, I'm gonna just take this and I bring you up close for this go round. And also it has sound. And where did my dead cat go? Done lost it. Well, we're not outside, so I think it's about right. So a quarter inch bit, four flute, sticking out just a little bit deeper than this flange thickness right here. And then all I'm doing, it's easy to control. I'm dropping her down in the hole and I'm just wallering this out. And that's literally what I'm doing is wallering. So I'll turn this on and we're just kind of The important part is that this will fit upside down and you can still line that hole up. So like right now, this thing will go down in flush. It's gonna be a little loud for a second. But I'm just taking me a punch. You can't take a hammer and just, but I take this punch and drive her down really flat. Like that. Now that's a beauty. We'll do this four more times and we're ready to put I wish I had more of these, but at least put one more in. Matter of fact, I'm probably gonna rob one for a project so I can finish this up. You know when you screwed up is when the, the this part's up and uh, the radius is up and it's supposed to be down while you're doing this from the bottom. This is the bottom. Doggone it. All right, now this is supposed to be up. The nut search is supposed to be from the bottom. I forgot to flip it over. Let's do that one more time. Now I've got this laid out. I actually did three inches, half inch in, three inches, three inches, three and a half, three and a half, and then three. That looked like a pretty nice pattern. So we're gonna go ahead and I've already punched them. And we'll drill them. So now what I have is a transfer punch. I'll go out there and place this on the seat clamp it down, and then I want to transfer punch all these onto the seat out on the boat and get it ready for drilling. All 
Now normally you go ahead and screw these on the tool. I'm just gonna tap them down in there because they're a, they're a snug fit. I think that's gonna be okay. Let's see if our uh, alignment worked. Don't you hate it when you get a sliver in your finger and you can't see it, or but you can sure as heck feel it? All right. Well, I thought I would just go ahead and set this down. Um, this isn't this isn't riveted or anything, but about, about the center of the seat's pretty good, I think. But I was just trying this out with the eight-inch riser. It's an awesome seating position. I like it a lot. I was just kind of curious if it was going to be too tall. We're operating yeah, this might be a little low for the short shaft engines outboards but it might be perfect for the long shaft that are going to be hanging up here by yay high that'll be about right here that'll be pretty comfortable maybe i have to meet somewhere in the middle between the eight inch and the ground you know maybe a four inch would work but this is nice because I can swing all the way around here. Chair's not going to come into contact with anything. I might have to put an eight, to eight inch one back here and try it. But I want to transfer this one up front. That's what I like about this setup. It's all very serviceable. There's no rivets that are going to interfere. You know, I have to drill them out. How's that feel? Man, you're sitting up here in the sky seats for sure, but uh, that's pretty cool. Rotates nice. You can throw a leg over the side. And this is what I was really hoping it'd be able to do. As a feller could get up here and just throw his legs up on the bow and just relax. Fly a drone, maybe get some drone shots. You know what I'm saying? That will play. If I put this right here, it's going to support my cover. All right, I think we need to drill and install the, the back one now. I really am glad I went with five here. You know that. When you wiggle that back and forth or pull on that, all the stress is out here on the strongest part of the aluminum seat. That is so solid. Man. That's the way to do it, guys. That's the way to do it. Now, I think the approach on this one's gonna have to be a little bit different since there's no way to clamp it down in a good good way so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna come back here and i'm gonna put the first one in here got a mark i'll drill it i'll put the insert in and bolt it down
Now guys and gals, you gotta admit, that's a pretty solid fix. That's a, that's a John boat hack and a half. You got an old John boat and you wanna put a seat in there solid as, solid as being cemented, solid as being welded, solid as my integrity. There we go, I like that one better. Then this is a good way to go. Now, here we could have gone with some button head socket screws, machine screws, which would give you a cleaner, smoother look. But you know, for this boat, it's good enough. And there again, you can't argue with the rigidity that offers. And just as thin, when I drilled through that aluminum, you can see how thick this aluminum is right here. It's not crazy thick, but once you put 10 inserts in there and suck it up tight against this board, this becomes solid. Now I don't have a seat for this one yet or a riser. I'll be looking at uh, maybe to see if I put an eight inch one or a four inch one or something. We'll, we'll play around with that one. But uh, boy, you can't argue with the results though. Now, these hoops are on here just to keep my cover up in the air so water don't pile up in it. But uh, we'll have to vacuum out the chips eventually. And uh, when we get her out for the summer, which golly, I hope is soon. Today we're talking, right now it's 43 degrees. 44 degrees out is the air temp, but the wind chill is at 33. That's still one degree above freezing. And I was gonna work on the Jeep in this video, but we're not. I can't, I can't be out here in this, I could. I'd put my coat on just so I could tolerate it a little bit better, but you know, I'm gonna be two to three hours on the front of that Jeep tearing it apart. And I ain't doing it in this weather. I'm sorry. For all you folks out there that watch my channel for me to work on Jeeps, <laughs> all 1.2 of you, <laughs> you're gonna have to wait. But we'll do it, I promise. Uh, woo! Windmills are humming. Check it out. Can't even see it spinning. She gets to wailing. But uh, no, we're gonna. I'm gonna put some, uh, I think, some Millennium B seats. I don't know if you've seen those before. They're a mesh seat, but they're Millennium B, B100s, I believe, something like that. Uh, they're a mesh seat with a mesh top. They're 17 inches wide. I ain't kidding. You could sit in those all day. Now, people might say, Michael, trust to stand up to fish. I like sitting and fishing. I stand up enough walking around out here all day long doing things and around, you know, just in my daily life, I walk around a lot. I get my steps in, I'm telling you. But when it comes time to go sit in a boat, kick back, relax, drink me a cold Diet Coke, you know, and enjoy life a little bit. But uh, I'm excited, I'm getting more excited. This boat's getting really close now. Uh, we're gonna get that 50 horse back together. That's probably still gonna be the first one I drop on here and take to the lake and see what she'll do. And I'm gonna have some good comfy seats to sit in while I do it. I'm excited about that. Man, and I, I tell you what, starboard is not crazy cheap, but if you're only buying a foot, 18 inch square, or something enough to do two of these like I did, you know, you can get them pretty reasonable. I'll see if I can find a link to some starboard in the description, but the half inch turned out really good. It seems to be plenty strong and it's gonna hold, hold, hold. And there again, I just used nothing but quarter 20s to hold it down. And you got guys might be thinking, my God, quarter 20s, you should have used like five sixteenths or three eighths. No, no, absolutely not. These, 10 of these is plenty strong for this seat. Four in the middle there is plenty strong to hold that seat. And think about it, I've got that flange nut or what do they call those three prong things in the backside. You're not gonna pull that through that plastic. The bolt will break first and you're gonna have to break a couple of them. Unless something comes loose and you're just riding around with it loose and you got one bolt doing all the work, then yeah, you could probably twist one off. All right, man, you know, I love being outside, but this is just, come on, springtime. I want some 50s and 70 degree weather with no wind and to get out here and have some fun. We still got a lot of work to do around here. I gotta do, here's all that stuff for the green machine that we cut up. 
that's a lot of good bar stock there that I'm going to be cutting up and putting on my metal shelf. Uh, something else I did. I used my 3D printer, and I'll probably put this on my 3D channel. Uh, I don't put a lot. I don't put a lot of things on my 3D channel, I guess, because you know it's hard to come up with useful items with your 3D printer. I'll be honest with you. But I made some of these caps, and they go right up here. So when I'm climbing in out of the boat, I don't have a jagged or just a thin edge there in metal. I can grab a hold of that and just, you know, pull myself out of the boat. Here's the plan. Oh, you know something else we could do today that would be enjoyable that I wouldn't mind doing? Let's go ahead and let's build us a shelf out here. Because I've been threatening to do that, have a shelf next to the boat so I can set my tools there that are at reachable height and not down here on this platform. I think that'd be an excellent thing to do right now. Yeah, and I got two more beams here that I'm going to cut, leave them a little short. And, uh, yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Let's do it. You know, you just knock out a project today, you get 365 projects done. But let's just scale it back. Start off small, you know, get an hour's worth of work done on your project every day and you'll have 365 hours. You think about it, you put 365 hours against anything you do, anything you do, you will have accomplished a lot. Unless you put 365 hours of sitting and watching TV, then you've accomplished absolutely nothing. So you gotta get off your ass and you gotta get out and do something. You gotta stay active, folks. Staying active is key. All right, I'm gonna go get my bandsaw ready to rock and roll here. And we're gonna cut those pieces off and we'll be back in just a second. All right, we're back at it again with the old bandsaw. Now this is some really thin metal. It's amazing the strength it has when it's structurally, when it's in place as a, as a pallet rack, but it's very thin. And I'm using a very fine tooth blade here. I've got, they come with several blades, let me show you. Now this here, Showing this isn't what's in here. I got a finer blade than this in here. This is a coarse one That's for stock quarter inch and thicker if you go to the store when you're looking at these and I'm buying the bimetal blades They're, They last the best um, Made in USA shut the front door Love it anyway, it's got the uh, You want to keep at least three teeth on the metal at all times if you're not able to keep three teeth on there because the blade is too coarse you will rip teeth off this will prevent you from ripping your teeth off and you make your blades last longer right now i got to cut this this way then i'm going to 45 it oh i just realized i was going to 45 it the wrong direction man Measure three times, cut once, I think is what I need to play now. Because this needed to be angled this way. Yeah, I wanted something like that. And you'll see why in a minute. I'll just put me a reference mark to help me my blade follow what a mess I got going on there which one do I cut oh first we're gonna cut it in half Now the question is, can I get this 45 cut done? I cannot. What angle can I get? I can get that angle, that'll work.
That'll work. The only reason I'm cutting this angle on here anyway is to put a screw, easily put a wood screw up through here into my board so it can hold the ends together and keep the other boards from falling out. Let's go ahead and soften up these edges a little bit. Now I want to drill a hole right there for wood screw. Now the goal here is to take advantage, get this about the same height as the boat. So this is be right across here. Looks like it's pointing downhill, but actually it's the boat pointing uphill. We'll split the difference. We'll put this one over here. Now I can go and cut these two by eights, which is way overkill in between. But drop them right in here. It looks like about 44 and a half is the magic number. Let's go cut these, some of these up. All right, let's see if we can piece this together. I want one as a backstop, I believe. That Mr. Sun would stay out like this, man, that'd make a world of difference, but there's a cloud. Heading my way, looks like it's gonna dump four inches of rain on me. All right. Did we get them all in the wood that time? Yes. Thank goodness. Cut that too short? I did. How did I do that? Golly. Wasn't it 45 and a half? What did I do? 44 and a half. Dang it. Well, those are 44 and a half. What am I missing here? 44 and a half. Oh, that's just, that's just sliding out. Get back in here. There we go. Thought I screwed up. So we'll do something like that. We'll put this guy right here. Oh, yeah. Now, why did I drill a hole in the top? There's no board sitting on top of there. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Boat's in the way for that one to do that. A little bit. That's going to work really well. I'm happy with that. In case any of you is wondering how strong it is, 
it's plenty strong. I set a world of tools on there. Perfect. That's gonna work so well. Now we'll back the boat back up. Yeah, that's gonna work really well. Cause keep in mind, I can move the boat wherever I want. If I'm working up something here, I can roll the boat backwards. If I'm working toward the back, I can roll the boat forward. That's gonna work out well. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the content. I enjoyed spending time with you today and we got more stuff to come. I'm, I'm not out of ideas, not even by a long shot of things I need to do and work on. But this thing turned out amazing. I can't wait to get some really cool seats in here. Uh, I know this one's good enough, but you know, I'm, comfort is everything for me. And when I'm relaxing, I want to relax in style and in comfort. But uh, this, is, this has been a fun project. So we got two things to done today. No, the Jeep wasn't gonna happen. It's just too cold and you know, that, that was a short outside project. I've been in and out all day messing with this thing. Uh, but extended periods of time outside, I'll get chilled. I just know I will. And it just ain't worth it. A Jeep can wait. Looks like we got a couple more weekends of just what I wouldn't call boat and weather, you know? So we'll get that Jeep ready to rock and roll over the next couple weeks. And uh, there'll be a video on that. I'm pretty sure the left front drive shaft is about ready to explode or it has already exploded, but it's making some God awful noises and running away out of balance and all kinds of ugly stuff. Could be due for some wheel bearings too. So we're going to replace whatever's wrong up front on that thing. Alrighty. Well, I'm going to put the boat cover back on because you can see as the, the clouds behind me don't look friendly. They look threatening and uh, I don't want to get the boat all soaking wet on the inside unnecessarily. So we're gonna get after it and we gotta, my shop currently looks like a dumpster fire. It is a mess. Every project I do, it just turns into a mess and then I clean it up and we start all over again. But it's always fun to clean it up and start off fresh and think about the next project and we're gonna do that. So you guys get out there, have some fun, work on your projects, get them done. And uh, I hope this one helped you with what you can do for a seat in your john boat that's not going to go anywhere that that i'm impressed at how well it turned out some of you might even say now if you watch this long guys and gals if you leave the words genius my wife just it drives her nuts when other people go well, that's a genius idea she thinks i get a big head or something <laughs> so if you guys leave comments that that seat mount is a genius idea, I've never seen such a genius thing before in my life. <laughs> she reads the comments. She'll know I did something. I'm not telling her. She's going to have to ask me, did you leave another thing for them to call you a genius again? <laughs> it's just fun. All right, folks, get out there, have some fun. Remember, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is, and we'll see you on the next video. This is Michael saying be kind and uh, don't forget to subscribe and give that thumbs up. Let's keep this going. I'm out. Well, that was a successful day.